this session I'm going to demonstrate how to use the email component of Microsoft Outlook. How to create a message, to send it, how to format it, and send it to one or more individuals. So let's open Outlook. You might want to reference the previous videos on how to set up your Outlook account and how to understand the various components of Outlook. Notice on the left hand side here we have our favorite folders and our various accounts. So we can click here on inbox and notice under inbox here we have the mail that has come in to this specific account that has been received. Under drafts these would be messages that we have drafted and have not sent yet. So sometimes we start a message and then Outlook saves it automatically. We forget to send it or we have to run to a meeting and you can choose to save that message as a draft and then come back to it. Under send messages, this will be the messages that we have sent out to other individuals. Deleted messages, this will be what we have deleted. Junk email, this is if your company uses filtering. And then outbox is messages that are waiting to be sent out. Typically in Outlook, the messages will be sent automatically. However, if something is stuck and not getting sent, that's where it will be temporarily stored in the outbox. So we go here under inbox and at this point we are going to send a new message. So I click here on new message and notice we have the from and then the to where it's sending it to. And then we also have a carbon copy that we might want to send to somebody else. So if we want it to send to multiple people, put a semicolon and then you can put a space and then type another email address and so on. So you can send it to multiple people, multiple individuals by using semicolon. That's the trick in Microsoft Outlook. You can't put a comma, you have to use a semicolon in there for multiple addresses. The other thing is that you can put a carbon copy here if you wanted to send it to somebody else and then you'll type the subject. So this will be just the title of the message. Typically you want to make sure that the title of the message is meaningful just like the subject so you want them to click on it and actually read your message. Next you want to start typing the message. Uh, this is basically the message that you want them to read. Now one thing to remember as you're using email and such is that spelling nowadays matters so try to make sure that your spelling and the email content is looking professional and also try not to type everything in caps. Most likely you know about that. It's considered typically yelling. So try to keep the formatting at a minimum and not highlighting and bold and all that type of stuff unless there is a need to do so. Now for the sake of demonstrating the formatting of this email and such, I'm going to just go and type some additional content here. And notice if I wanted bulleted lists or if I wanted uh, specific numbers, all I have to do is start typing A, for example, and now it's going to start creating the list. If we don't like A, B, C, notice we have these options here where we can format this and make this much fancier. So this is the basic text formatting tools, whether we want to change the font, the size of the font, and notice you can adjust the size of the font to increase the font size from these little icons here. Make this bold, italics and underline and text color and all these different options that you see over here. So these are some of the tools that have to do with the formatting of the text. Now if we wanted to use an address book and check the names and such, you'd use these tools over here. And then to attach a file for this, which I'll demonstrate in a moment, you'll use the attach file function here and attaching items and uh, things of that nature. So we type our message the way we want it. We can format this any way we want it. Then we want to attach the file. Now to attach a report while we are in the new message area, we click on attach report. And one of the nice features of 2016 is actually that the most recent files that we have been using, they're going to be listed first here on the recent items. So we don't need, really need to navigate where the files are. 
that's in the case of where you opened the report and you worked on it for the last moment and such. So we simply click over here and then add it as an attachment. The other option is to browse my PC here for the attachment and go and find it under documents and notice there's sales report here under documents. For now I'll show you the easy way so we click here on sales report and notice it's attached. Next we can double check how our message looks like and we'll be able to press send. Before we press send here I'm going to just show a couple of additional options here for tags. Sometimes the message might be of high importance and this is where you can mark it as high importance while sending it. I would suggest however that you use the high importance only when it is really highly important. If all the messages that you send out are of high importance when they are actually not it could frustrate the receiver so use this feature wisely. Under the follow-up area here, you also have an option to choose when you want to have a reminder for this. So you could set this to follow up with this next week or tomorrow, and you basically just put uh, a check mark on it, and it will add it to your tasks to follow up the next day and such. It will actually put a little flag next to it. And then when you're ready, you press send. At this point, the message should have been sent. Typically, it goes into the outbox first, and from there, if everything is working correctly, it uh, clears out the, uh, the outbox. And then, if you wanted to see whether it was sent and what was sent, you'd go under the sent items folder. So this is what was sent. If I go here to my personal email account, and I go under inbox, and this is my Gmail account, notice I will have a message with a new report attached and as a user in my Gmail account I can go ahead and open this report and view the contents of it. Now I can go back to my inbox and review the messages. Now in the case where a message was not deliverable notice you'll receive an automatic email that it could not be delivered. To delete it we can do it a couple ways here. We can either click on delete up here after we have selected the message or we can click on the little delete option right here. Obviously this is very basic stuff however this is what you'll be using 99% of the time. That's why I'm kind of covering it a little bit more in detail. So that's how you compose a message, send it to multiple individuals, uh, copy somebody as well on the message and then checking where the send messages are and then how you delete a message. So stay tuned for the next session that will cover how to use the email functions such as forwarding, replying, and using additional features related to email before we move into the other more advanced features such as the calendaring and contacts and tasks.